Hi, I'm Susan Sea, founder and CEO of the COA Club. And I'm Mika Goldberg, a life and leadership coach. Welcome to the COA Club TV. So today we are very lucky to have Natra Morali. Is that how I pronounce your last yes. name? That's right, great. And we are so happy to have her here because um, Natra is such a wonderful person with you know that I've met recently, <laughs> and uh, and she is someone who is going up the corporate ladder, I would say, successfully, <laughs> which is why we invite her here because we want to hear all her secrets. Uh, and and on top of it, she's you know not from the U.S., so she'll tell you a little bit about it. She's actually from Singapore, um, and then she had but she has lived in the U.S., um, in Asia, in Europe. She studied and worked in these places. Right now, you are the um, you are the commercial is it the uh, commercialization um, pricing manager at SAP um, you didn't you recently just got promoted as manager right. congratulations, congratulations. Which is fantastic um, and then you coach your team on strategies in the whole pricing area so that's very impressive I don't know what that means but that's very <laughs> impressive but, uh, which is great so thank you again Natra for being here thank you uh, thanks for inviting me to be part of the famous pink couch <laughs> and she actually said that we should rename the Coa Club into the Pink Couch Ladies or something like that, <laughs> which is great. I love it. <laughs> but anyway, um, um, I I'm started. <laughs> You're sorry. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I uh, would love to know how your typical day, your typical week looks like. Yeah. So um, I think it's predominantly the same as most corporate women in mm. the U.S. who would be working in the technology sector. I'll wake up. Um, I never skip my first meal of the day, so just Good to fuel one. me that up and also like you know get the fuel pumping and be ready for the day ahead. And I usually try to prioritize mm -hmm. um, the rest of the day: calendars, back-to-back -back meetings, mm -hmm. sometimes mentoring and coaching, people managing people up, people down. And it's a multi-matrix organization. And sometimes I try to carve myself out to take up. Like, you know, a screen break and also just um, have some lunch. And to end off the day, I would usually participate in Pilates classes or yoga. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on some days, I would also volunteer or mentor pro bono oh, and um, try to give back to the community. That's a lot. Wow. That's wow. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and the fact is that you, 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 know, you make sure that you have time for yourself to do things like the yoga and the Pilates what, that you're doing. Uh, but at the same time, you are full of, you know, you're so full at, with, at work with like helping your team and all that stuff. And on top of it, volunteering for things that we, the Cohen Club is asking you to do. Like, come Thank on, you. Natura, you want to help us with this, don't you? And she's like, okay. I was like, I love her. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, no worries. And we, we do want to know uh, a little bit more about you. We'd love to hear about your mini life story because today's um, you know topic, we call it breaking the traditional mold. And I immediately <laughs> thought about Natura will be a great person to talk mm -hmm. about this. Yeah, thank you. Well, um, I'm usually the city girl. So I'm from Singapore, just like Susan is. And um, I kind of just followed my parents, I guess thanks to them, they just decided to take wherever their careers were moving mm -hmm. in that direction. So I got the opportunity to grow up in Europe as well as Asia and also the US as well. Oh. So kind of went to like 14 different schools and universities. Wow, wow. I, I must say, yes, it mm -hmm. was pretty much like a nomadic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, it kind of kind of like, I mean, thinking back about it, it helped me be more nimble, adaptable and thriving. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just for life, right? It also equips you for career, like mm -hmm. whatever life throws at you, are like just adapting to change all sure. the time. So yeah. I guess thanks to my parents in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I purposely moved over to the UK to study mm -hmm. for my bachelor's, my master's and my CPA okay. and then um, I kind of followed my uh, significant other to move to the U.S. Mm -hmm. and I guess I don't regret anything at all. I think, um, I mean, yeah, for the most part it was in Singapore, mm -hmm. but I have, I would say, I mean, like a third, third culture kid, mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. an adult, so it's kind of like mixed bag of everything. So. You're a true cosmopolitan, <laughs> that's exactly. for sure. And uh, you 
you actually mentioned something that goes right into my next question. Uh, the how growing up as a nomad kid, so to speak, <laughs> uh, has already benefited you in your career. So what do you think, uh, what do you consider the most important qualities for really powerful leadership? And I would add powerful leadership as a woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I would say sometimes it's like people always think they know where they want to be. I'm mm -hmm. actually one of those people who does not know where she mm -hmm. wants to be. Mm -hmm. And I know, like when I talk to uh, people in their, uh, who are early in their career right. or in high school students, they always think that, oh, Nathan knows what she's doing. She's achieved so much and she's right. like 30. And you have, so you don't want to diminish <laughs> that. Right, you exactly. have, right? But, well, um, right. but the truth is I always did not know where mm -hmm. I want to be, mm -hmm. but it's always like trying to make the most out of the opportunities yes. that came up to me. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I did not have like a clear not star. So mm -hmm. I kind of knew where I was good at. I was good at science and math, mm -hmm. maybe this, maybe that. Like there are some people who have like a strict plan out and know where they are heading sure. towards. Like my sister knew that she wanted to be an engineer by the time she was in grade four or five. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty clueless even as a teenager. So I think, um, you know, uh, it's important to know where your strengths and weaknesses right. are. Yeah. And one way to get that is through help through a coach mm -hmm. or like a mentor. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also like ask people kind of like where they were in your life stage sure. or career mm -hmm. stage. So sure. that kind of helps. I mean, if there's a famous quote by Albert Einstein saying like, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will think it's stupid its whole life. <laughs> right, that's right. So, um, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think it's really important to know where your strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. are and kind of leverage that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think that yeah. is really important to know yourself mm -hmm. and how you propel yourself mm -hmm. to be better. How did you discover what is your strength? Uh, you were talking about it's important to know how mm -hmm. is your strength uh -huh. uh, and then go with that. Like how did you how did you know? You just, oh, you just know because you just know you're good at certain things, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like, I think there is no one straight path. Like, mm -hmm. if you ask me, maybe like when I was a teenager, I wanted to probably just study and then um, work for the big five and mm -hmm. then that's it. Settle mm -hmm. down for right. life. But um, I think my career path has been kind of like all over, like a meander. Sure. So I started off, once I finished my CPA and my master's, I realized I did not want to be an accountant okay. or in finance. Okay. So it. I actually started being uh, working in a market um, research firm, mm -hmm. and then I went to nonprofit, right. and then I went to like aviation, wow. and then mm -hmm. um, it was just a recruiter found me, and then I leaped into the technology industry. Right. So it's kind of like, as I said, um, being adaptable and, yeah, absolutely, and like yeah. kind of be like the chameleon. Yes, yeah, like for sure. When you can and um, when you you can kind of like thrive and adapt. Right, that right. is when um, you you constantly evolve and change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, as, yes. I agree. as you grow yeah. older, maybe yeah. circumstances change you. So I think trying to be adaptable and evolve mm -hmm. is really mm -hmm. crucial. Thanks for the, saying that because I feel like so many people when they feel stuck. Mm -hmm. or insecure about what to do next, uh, they don't anticipate that they are changing too. Mm -hmm. So whatever felt right five years ago mm -hmm. uh, might already not feel right mm -hmm. right now. That doesn't make it a wrong decision, mm -hmm. right? It, it was probably still a good decision to lead you where you are now, Absolutely. but whatever brought you here won't bring you there. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes sometimes the brave thing, the COA thing to do yeah, is saying, okay, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. And uh, That's right. like, like you even already very early saying after your master's in CPA, yeah, okay, I did it all. Mm -hmm. Tick oh, the, right. the box and did it probably excellently the way we know <laughs> you, I'm sure that. Thank you. But then say, no, now I'm looking into, I have a solid foundation, mm -hmm. but I'm not doing the classical thing. I'm doing something a little different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And all, 
it would have been okay if you had gone to one of the big five and started a straightforward career, right. but it's possible another way too. And I think that is so, so important that there's no must. Right, there is no must. Yeah. And, and the fact is that, yeah, I mean, you are wise for your young age, I have to say, <laughs> and, and you kind of know yourself and you kind of know, you know what to do. In a way, I mean, even though it was different ways that you get there, the fact that you had your nomadic lifestyle as a young, really helped you to hone that adaptability yeah in the situation. I, I really want to just say that, you know, if for the for the audience listening in, there may be uh, a, a people who are much older than you and thinking that, okay, I'm stuck in where I am and I've never been that adaptable, but it's never too late, right? It's right. never too late yes, to, to, too to, late. to get out of the box, be brave, get out of the box. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. that reminds me of my, one of my favorite quotes from Martin Luther King Jr. Okay. He says, um, you know, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If yes. you can't walk, then crawl. As long as you're keeping or moving forward, forward. or mm -hmm. doing something. That's right. Sometimes yeah. you have to take a couple of steps back, but you're still learning and you're building your toolbox That's and right. experiences along the I way. I love that. So, I love that. so great. I love that. <laughs> no. It's really true. Very true. <laughs> no, given that, I want to move into the next quick question. This question I ask all the guests every uh -huh. single time is that, you know, Koa Club means, you know, Koa means fearless. <laughs> um, so what is the bravest thing you've ever done? Hmm. I know you've done many, many, many things. <laughs> I'm actually not sure if I'm that brave. You know, if you have to ask my family members, they would be like, Natra? No, she's scared of spiders, critters. She's scared of like everything that's moving, unless it's on my plate. So yeah. <laughs> so, um, I love it. But uh, I think in terms of my personal life, I decided to do something that really scares me. Mm -hmm. I try to do like not just my personal life or professional life. I try to do that every few years. Something to just that. I've never been mm -hmm. like exposed to before or mm -hmm. comfortable before. Yeah. So uh, I did an ultra marathon for that 62 miles. That is amazing. Miles. I love it. Um, wow. And I was second guessing myself. Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. maybe I should not have done, but I didn't want to disappoint myself and the friends I told. I'm like, yes. too late to you yes. know back out now. So I trained for almost a year and I must say, it turned out to be a good success. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of professional life, so it's not exactly work related. Mm -hmm. But um, I actually started uh, Pan Asians at SAP. Mm -hmm. It's an employee resource group within SAP, mm -hmm. my employer. Right. And I just started uh, under the pandemic uh, a year ago. And we have 1,200 members and wow. I lead a team Amazing. of uh, 14 volunteer leaders. Wow. Um, all over the USA. Mm -hmm. So I was, it was just like amplified efforts. I wasn't expecting it to grow this much, mm -hmm. this quickly. Yeah, right? but that's so, that's but, amazing. And um, yes, that is exactly so. what COA stands for, <laughs> right? Thank you. Because it makes you, it, it is a, my, my thing is visibility and it makes you be visible. If you, if you set up a group like that, that grows that quickly mm -hmm. and you have to step into very big leadership shoes suddenly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and you did it. And it gave me so much of exposure that I would have never got mm -hmm. through right. like um, just my work. I mean, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, pricing and commercialization is important. Right. Yeah. Sure. But there was only so much I could do and so much of visibility right. and my internal stakeholders and external stakeholders right. that I work with. Right. Yeah. But there is just so much more, That's like right. this whole world that opened up to That's me. That's right. But yeah. also yeah. You, you care a lot about diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. and all those things. And yes. therefore doing this for you is something, why we call it your passionate project, <laughs> right? And yes. then you, 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 you don't mind spending all the time doing it. It's because you love it. And you know that you're going to be good at it, which is why you have 1200 followers right off the bat. You yeah. know? I want to follow you. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's only for SAP. Oh, <laughs> Right. But, but actually, you if you are an SAP yeah. and you, you are from an Asian country, you're Asian American, then you or know. Be an or, ally. Yeah. or be an ally. Or be an ally. See, exactly. So. That's Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So before we wrap up, mm -hmm. I am asking my favorite question. Mm -hmm. So Nitra is a little younger, so the <laughs> answer might be a little different than with the, <laughs> some of our previous guests. What advice would you give your 16-year-old self? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they'd be like, that was only five years ago. So yeah, yeah, I, like, <laughs> I wish it was. It feels like that's it. So I feel funny. like I'm still kind of hovering in my early 20s or late teens. Yeah, yeah that's but why. But I would say, um, you know, comparison is toxic. Like, I still think sometimes, mm -hmm. like, subconsciously, maybe it's my Asian heritage a little mm -hmm. bit, sometimes, oh, look at her. She's scoring like 100 in math. Why can't I do it? Right. So mm -hmm. it's just subconsciously ingrained in a lot yeah, of people sure. and yeah. I am one of them but I have trying to try to get out of that habit now okay. but it's okay but I would say um, 
focus on what you can do to like propel yourself better and be the best version of yourself Very and true. also look at other um, women as well as men mm -hmm. and or what they have done mm -hmm. to get that to that position right. i mean we have mm -hmm. no idea what sacrifice they have mm -hmm. gone through right. to where they are Absolutely. right now That's so right. it's like we are just looking at it on the surface mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. just like assuming oh this yeah. is all yeah. like piece of cake for them right. so yeah. i would say yeah comparison is really toxic mm -hmm. but they have their struggles too mm -hmm. exactly yeah. mm -hmm. and view that as um you know view them as your inspiration, mm -hmm. not competition. Right. To actually get yeah. where you inspire to be or aspire to be. That's yeah. right. That's, yeah. I mean, that's great. I yeah. mean, you know, again, this is like badass advice from, <laughs> yes. from somebody who is young, but yeah. really wise beyond words. <laughs> yes, and never <laughs> underestimate how willing people are to talk to you. Yes. And to, to, to tell you straight up how things are for them, especially if it's not your direct superior or someone, if it's someone in a different organization, mm -hmm. uh, people are often so willing to, to chat and to be honest about, hey, this wasn't easy. Right? Yes, it still isn't absolutely. easy. That's right. And, and, uh, and sometimes, sometimes it can also be easy, but right. it's, about, it's about being authentic and, and open about these things and ask people. Exactly, ask people. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. And yeah. maybe just if somebody just looks at you, they might think that everything came easy for you, but it's not. Now that we know your yeah. little mini story. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you. So. And honestly, I think you would um, learn from anyone at any mm -hmm. age. Like, mm -hmm. I yeah. do talk to my interns. Mm -hmm. I do talk to people younger than me. That's right. But mm -hmm. their, their perspectives are different. Mm -hmm. And you learn from their, Absolutely. their life stories and their journeys yeah. too. So That's I think right. age is just... A word, not it's a not word. It really is. It really is. Well, thank you, Natra, for you. spending the day with us on our couch, <laughs> on you know, the couch. and the pink couch. Yeah, and, uh, to to today, so, oh, which is go. great. You know, thank you for sharing your advice. It's, it's, this is great advice. I mean, even I want to take some of your advice and make sure that I really instill it in me as well, mm -hmm. because I think what you're saying resonates in the sense that should the comparison thing is so important because yeah. we always normally as human beings want to do comparison, but yeah. it's always good to remember it's the don't have to do that. Uh, then you can really decide to yourself. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you so Thank much you. for being here. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And I hope you all enjoyed our conversation here. Reach out to us. Reach out to Nitra if you want to talk further and share this video with your friends. Follow us on social media, and most importantly, be a leader on your own terms. Be brave. Be koa.